Hello, I'm Torvald of Torvald's Leatherworks, and I'm going to be giving you a lesson in basic leather tooling. Two of the things that scare people the most when they're learning how to do leather tooling is they will see a bit of very complex leather tooling done on something, say, like a western saddle skirt or a holster, and it intimidates them. The second thing is that when they go to buy their tools, they see such a volume of tools there that it just confuses them. Well, the thing is about the tools, let's start there. What you have to understand is that a vast majority of those tools are one-trick ponies. They're meant to do one thing and one thing only. Often, if you have to cover a large section of leather with a specific pattern, you have a tool that does that pattern and you just do a whole bunch of rows with that tool to make the image. Most of the time, you're only going to need one tool to be able to do a lot of your basic leather tooling, and that's this one. All right, this is a bevel, and uh, the one I have here is from Craft Tool. It's an F895, uh, but if you just put 895 bevel in your Google search, chances are you're going to find these all over the place. They're really cheap, only a couple of bucks, and they are going to be what you do the vast majority of your tooling with. You can see mine here. I've got it wrapped up with a bit to make it easier for me to hang on to. I've got a little arthritis. But uh, you can get these first basically anywhere that has leather tooling supplies. The second thing is what I mentioned first, which is the complexity of the designs. Do not let a complex design scare you. Because the reality is, when you're doing leather tooling, if you can trace, you can tool. Because that's virtually all the tooling is, is tracing. In a lot of the old manuals on learning how to do leather tooling, they'll tell you to trace an image onto tracing paper, um, which should give you a clue as to how you are going to be doing it. In my case, I just have a couple of images here that I printed out on my printer, and these will work just fine. You do not need to transfer these to tracing paper. Most of those manuals were written back before they had things like Xerox and computer printers, and so if you had an image that you needed to transfer onto a work surface, they would have you trace it. So what other tools are you going to need to be able to do this? Well, they're very simple. First thing, as I mentioned, is your bevel. The second thing you're going to need is called a swivel knife. These were a little more expensive, but they're well worth the investment. Get yourself a good one. Um, they're usually anywhere from 10 to $20, depending on where you find them. Um, they're called a swivel knife because you have this little saddle right here that your finger sits in and you hang on to it like this, and it's got a point in there that allows you to rotate it, and it makes it easier for you to follow the lines of the item you're going to trace. So you're going to need one of these. Next up, you're going to need a ballpoint pen. You're not gonna draw on the leather with this. You're going to trace your pattern onto the leather. Next, you're going to need a mallet. You're going to need something to tap on your bevel with to imprint your design onto the leather. There's a lot of different types of mallets out there that you can use for this. This one right here has a uh, plastic top on it. Um, you can also get ones that are made out of wood. You can get them made out of rawhide. Just make sure though if you're going to use the rawhide type, do not get the heavy mallet. The heavy mallet is meant for punching through leather. It's not meant for putting an image on. So you want a lightweight mallet for that. Another type are these right here. And uh, finally, of course, overkill. Uh, this is more for punching through something. You do not use something like this for putting your imprint on. Okay. So... Let me reset the camera so you can watch what I'm doing here. Oh, one thing I almost forgot. Obviously, you're going to need some way to transfer your image onto the leather, right? Well, what you need is water. 
You can get a bowl of water with a sponge and wipe it down, which again is how the old manuals tell you you can do it. I just happened to grab a handy dandy spray bottle here and spray down the surface. You don't want to saturate your leather. All you want to do is make it damp so that it will accept the imprint of the image that you're going to be tracing. So I'm going to reset the camera and then we will get started. Okay, we're back and we're ready to do our tooling. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention in regards to tools or materials you're going to need is you're going to need a solid surface to tool on. A lot of the manuals and many of the leather shops are going to recommend that you get yourself a slab of marble. That will certainly work. Although the marble slabs that they usually advertise at those places are a little on the expensive side. You can go down to any place that makes flooring tiles and find yourself a marble flooring tile that's usually a little cheaper, although it's going to be thinner than the one that most leather places are going to offer you. In my case, what I've got here, I just went down to my local landscape supply and got myself a nice piece of uh, stone that is usually used for walkways through gardens and such. Uh, it's nice and solid, it's nice and thick, and it basically stops your tapping from rebounding. You want a solid surface that will absorb the impact to put the image right onto your leather. You do not want any kind of bouncing. Do not use any poundo board. Poundo board may seem solid, but actually it's rubberized enough. It's meant to absorb shock, especially when you're punching through things. So this is meant for punching. It is not meant for tooling, so do not use this. All right, so we've got here our nice solid slab of stone. Uh, we've got some leather. This is just some eight to nine ounces. And we're back, sorry about that. Had a little trouble with the camera, had to reposition and uh, we'll pick up where we left off. I've got some uh, eight to nine ounce veg tan leather here. Uh, nice smooth surface for uh, putting our image on. And I've got, of course, I showed you earlier a couple of images. We're gonna go with the Triketra and so the first thing that you need to do is you need to moisten the surface that you're going to be working with. Uh, as I mentioned, with the old system, you could just take a sponge in a bowl, wipe it down real quick, paper towel, however you want to transfer it. I'm going to use my uh, spray bottle here, give it a couple of squirts. All right, now we're going to take our image and we're going to lay it on the paper. Now. When you're doing this, just make sure after you've moistened it, give the water a chance to absorb into the leather. You just don't want to see any glistening off the top. The reason for that actually is just because you don't want to wet your paper too much. Okay, so you're going to take your ballpoint pen. And now, what did I say earlier? Tooling is just tracing. Well, that's all we're going to do here. Take a couple of fingers from one hand, hold your, let, hold your image down onto the surface of the leather going to take your ballpoint pen and lightly just lightly you are going to press down and you're going to follow the line of the image that you want to transfer okay you do not want to press down too hard you do not want to punch through the paper and get ink on the surface of your leather you're just going to follow it with the ballpoint pen all right Follow that. Now, if at any point while you're doing this, and this can happen quite a bit when you're doing big, intricate designs, you lose track because here I can't see what I'm tracing on. I got a big black line and I'm tracing on it with a black pen. So if at any point, you're not sure if you've gotten all the lines. You've kept your fingers on the paper. Just lift it up. Look and see where you drew. Lay it back down. Do not just pick it up off the, off the leather because then you're going to have a devil of a time trying to get all the lines to line back up with where you are on the leather. So just hold it down a couple of fingers and then just lift it up to make sure you got everything. And then you've got it.
Okay, so we now have our image transferred. Now we have our image transferred. But again, this is why you keep fingers on the paper to hold it in place till you're done. So you can flip it up and look and there. Now we have a complete image. Don't know how well you can see that. Let me give it another spray of water here. You want to keep the surface of your leather just a bit damp. Okay. So there, now you can see it a little better, I think. Okay. So now we are going to carve this into the leather. For that, we need our swivel knife. Okay. I'm going to take our cover off here. And here we go. Position this however you need to to get a nice angle. And I'm not pushing down hard. You do not want to push down hard on this because all you're trying to do is cut through the surface skin and you don't want to cut down deep and into the leather to the point where you cause it to be uh, too thin and therefore a little fragile. All you're trying to do is break the surface of the leather, okay? And I don't know how well you can see that I'm kind of giving this just a little twist. Not only am I moving my hand, but I'm also twisting with my fingers on the blade. All right. So now we're going to move this. Try to be as smooth as you can. Go as slow as you need to to make a nice, smooth, continuous line. Okay. Now, if at any point it seems like you're having to strain or struggle or it feels like there's a little bit of skipping or jerking as you're pulling, dampen your leather again. But again, just damp. You don't need it to be saturated. Ideally, I would like to have a light shining this way for me um, so that I can see this a little clearer but because of my workspace and where I have to set up the camera don't quite have that so it's a little more difficult to see but not horrible but obviously my hand is blocking the light I'd rather have a light either shining straight down or at this angle for me okay so it's all carved in. Probably can't see that all too well, but it is carved in. And looking a little dry for me, so I'm gonna give it another couple of spritzes. Again, if you're using a bowl of water and a sponge, you can go ahead and uh, just dip the sponge in the water, give it a light squeeze. Don't scrunch it, because you still need some water to put on the leather, but give it a light squeeze rub it over the surface, let it soak in. You just don't want to see any water standing on the surface when you go to work on it. All right, so now we are going to tool this in. So remember, I told you this is all tracing. That's all this is. That is all tooling is, in this instance with an image, is tracing. We traced it once to put the image from our paper on the leather. We've traced it a second time now when we tooled it in with the swivel knife and now we're going to trace it a third time using our bevel. Okay, so I've got this uh, bevel in my hand. You're going to use the straight edge. Again, I don't know how well you can see what that looks like. It's a triangle and the long flat bottom is slightly angled. It's got a very smooth surface. It's nice and polished. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it so that that flat angle 
is right along the edge. I know I'm kind of blocking your view there with my hand, but it's going to go right along the edge. And you're just going to lightly tap. You're going to follow that line and just lightly tap. Okay, I'll angle a little bit, see here if you can get a better look at that. But all I've done is depressed the leather to the outside of the line. Okay. Now I'm going to go on here. So this is the third time now that I've traced this image. Right now I'm focusing on the outside edge. You can start from the inside if you want. Where you start doesn't matter. Let me try this from a slightly different angle so maybe you can see what I'm doing a little better. Just following that line lightly tapping and again just like the swivel knife if it seems like your bevel is not sliding smoothly if it seems to be catching or skipping as you're going get your water give it another quick spritz or wipe wait until it soaks in so it's not glistening Got one more outside line to follow here. And again, you can tell just by how well your bevel is sliding, your leather is too dry. You don't want it saturated. Again, I'm gonna see if I can get the angle slightly different and maybe you can see what I'm doing a little better. I don't do a lot of tooling anymore, mostly because I have some slight arthritis issues, especially in my fingers. I think you can see by having to, even with this built up handle, I start to get aches and cramps in my hands. All right, so that's the outside edge all done. So now I'm gonna go to the inside edge. And it's just a light tap. I mean, you can hear I'm not really pounding on it. Now I'm gonna switch mallets here. I've been using the, uh, the resin top here. Let me grab the other one. You can see this one here is similar to what stone carvers use, except that it's for leather. It's got a, uh, it's got a uh, plastic or resin um, piece here, and it basically does the same thing. Serves the same function as the other mallet. I know that a lot of professionals prefer these types of mallets to these types of mallets. I can tell you with all of the years that I've been doing tooling, you know what? There, to me, there's no perceptible difference in function and utility, except that these typically cost you a whole lot more. These are usually really inexpensive. 10 to 20 bucks for this, 20 to $30 or more for these. So, if you can find one of these really inexpensively, great. Otherwise, these little cheap things here are perfect. 
Uh, you can get them again in rawhide and in wood. Uh, the wood ones tend to be even cheaper still. They're actually not that all hard to make. Showed you this big monster here before. I actually uh, bought this a number of years ago uh, at an event called Penzik. And basically this is just a chunk of fence post. Somebody drilled uh, it out with a huge uh, with a huge wood drill, stuck a handle in there, put a screw through to hold it in place. And on this end, he rounded it off for dishing metal. This end, he kept it flat. Uh, I liked it because I like using this for dishing leather for the leather armor that I make. Um, and it's definitely heavy. All right, we got just a few more lines to do here, and then this will be done. And we have completed our Triketra. There's your Triketra. That's pretty much it. So, quick recap. You are going to need an F895 bevel tool. Uh, just find it anywhere online. You're going to need a mallet for tapping. You are going to need ballpoint pen. You are going to need a swivel knife. You are going to need a source of water. I just use a spray bottle. And you're going to need a surface. I've got that nice big uh, heavy chunk of stone. Cultured marble works just fine. Might be a little lighter, but a lot more expensive. And there you go. And it really doesn't matter how complex the image that you are going to transfer is. Same principle applies. You just moisten your leather, lay the image on top, hold it down with one hand, trace it out with your ballpoint pen, make sure you've got it all transferred, cut it in with your swivel knife lightly. All you want to do is cut the surface. Then you're going to tap along those lines, tracing it now for the third time with your, uh, with your bevel. That's it. If you have any questions, Go ahead and uh, add them in the comments below this video. I'll try to answer them as best I can. I hope you have a lot of fun with tooling.